that didn't happen last time, so I want to make sure we get that this time. Um, not that it's going to be overly exciting, but <laughs> something's better than nothing if you need to refer back. Okay, so let me get into uh, Bridge, and we'll start looking at your assignments from last week, which I, be honest with you, I've seen them. I've looked at all of these, but I have not had time to really study them. So um, we'll see what we think. Haley, you're up first because um, I'm not sure why. Oh, because you have an, uh, an 11 prefix on your must be for week 11. Is that what that is? What is it? Uh, it's your, the folder name was 11 underscore Blakemore. So I'm guessing that's week 11. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that puts you at the top of the list. All right. So um, let's take a look. First of all, let me pull this down just a hint. I'm guessing this is your high key image. Uh, and again, I have not, we will take a look at most of these as far as, or at least I'm going to take a quick look as far as the uh, histograms are concerned, just to see. Yeah, so this one actually is, um, I'll show you in Photoshop, it's really more of a mid-key, but there are I think it squeaks by because there is a spike in the upper uh, uh, upper side. I don't know if you uh, saw that or not. I'll, I'll open. We'll look at both of these and then we'll go in and take a look. And okay. then this is the low key. I like the low key image. I like um, well, I like a couple of things about this. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of um, very shallow depth of field for small objects like this. Uh, I like the black and white. I like the fact that it's lit from uh, above and behind, which is fairly consistent with what a lot of product stuff has done. Um, and it definitely has, even though it's, you know, it's kind of a festive thing, it's treated as a low key item, which is a little unusual. And I, and I kind of like that, but let me, uh, I know what I'll see in the histogram on this one, but let's take a look. Hang on, as soon as I get this switched over. Oops. Yeah, that hat is actually like supposed to be like a pet hat, so it's not. <laughs> so it's a pretty small thing. Yeah. All right. So, hmm. Funny, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go from one image to the other. So this is the, um, oh, I know it's going to just kick me out. I'm going to have to do that again. Doggone it. All right, no problem. Let's go with this one again. So this is the high key image. So if you look at the histogram down below, somebody is trying to get access. Give me a second. Ah, uh, there we go. James is trying to get in. Sorry about that. Let's try this one more time. <laughs> All right, so looking at the histogram, and I'll refresh it. It definitely, um, it definitely does have spiking, obviously, at the right-hand side. And I would say that this is really borderline, but I'd say that there's a majority of pixels in the in the lighter area as opposed to darker. But overall, the histogram is a little more of a mid-key because of the darker uh, items that are in it. I think if you had cropped a little bit of that out, you would have gotten a better histogram, but maybe not as interesting a photograph. So um, I'm not going to knock how you how you did it. I kind of like the first of all, the angle is very unusual, and I that's something that I'm always interested in seeing. Um, nobody typically shoots a car dashboard. I'm assuming this is a car dashboard <laughs> yeah. uh, from from an angle like this, and it kind of reduces some of the elements to, um, you know, less than recognizable. And it definitely keeps your attention on the subject. Uh, so this is a, a situation where a center placement uh, actually does work uh, rather than, you know, using an off. Uh, you could probably have done it either way and it would have been fine, but it definitely stands out in the middle here um, and just squeaks by on the high key thing. So I switched to the other image, but I don't know if you guys did. Are you still seeing the last image or the new, or the hat? Right now I'm seeing the, the first image. 
All right. Yeah. I don't know why it won't let me share a program. It's forcing me to share by image. There it is. So yeah, now you should see it. And now you can definitely see the histogram, which is in the lower left. Let me pull that out. Um, and I, even, I forgot. I didn't even know there was a spike there. I completely forgot about that spike. I try to get as much to the left as possible. Well, the spike isn't a problem really, because again, if you identify what it is that those picks or that part of the graph represents, it's first of all, the lower left-hand corner, which is, you know, there's no detail there. The background, uh, there are a lot of areas with no detail. The shadow of the hat in the foreground is very little detail there, but we don't really need detail in those areas. So that spike on the left is representing those pixels and, um, and so in this, it's not always a problem to have the histogram slammed up against one side if, if it's representing areas that you really, now if, if the hat was underexposed and we were seeing a lot of that down there because of that, then it would be a problem. But you know, this dark area down here, lower left, you're never gonna see detail that down there unless you put light in that area. So uh, I wouldn't worry about that at all. So this was a, I think maybe the only thing I would have uh, played with a little bit more here, if possible, would have been to, you know, that, there's that one reflection in the upper left-hand corner there that draws my eye a little bit. Um, and I, I might have maybe even pulled the crop up just a little bit from the bottom. Um, let me see how that fares. You know, I wouldn't cut into the shadow of that, obviously. I want to keep that like that, but it does sort of get rid of a little bit of that area in the bottom left without significantly impacting the rest of the image. But that's, it's very minor. So uh, overall, I, I like that. I like both of these images actually. Let me get back into bridge. Bridge, there we go. Uh, do you have a favorite? Which one do you like the best? The first one's my favorite. Yeah, I I I kind of went back and forth on these two, but uh, I can see that. Yeah, I like the fact that the the subject is this is kind of unusual because it's actually it appears to be in the same plane as some other elements in the picture. Yet it is the only thing that is tack sharp, and everything else is out a little bit. So it's kind of an unusual um, happenstance. Yeah, I don't know how I got it that focus. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it looks good. It's definitely really, really sharp focus. And like I said, everything else is a little bit out. So um, that's probably one of the reasons that it stands out as much as it does. All right, let me make an adjustment here. All right, and let's go on to uh, Amelia's. So we have uh, originals and then we have, so let's do that. Let's look at, um, the original on the left, the CR2 on the left, and then the, um, so I'm not sure if, about the histogram here. Let's see what it looks like. I'm just, I won't necessarily go back and forth um, and show you guys these unless there's an issue. So the histogram on this one, it is just a, just a hair off to the right. So I, again, I think it, it qualifies. It's not what I'd consider a traditional high key image but if you go strictly on the histogram it is still more mid-key but it's got enough to the right hand side that i'd say it probably qualifies so i'm not gonna lie i forgot about the histogram stuff <laughs> while shooting and editing i apologize that's okay uh this is the second image this would be more the low-key image obviously um, which, you know, you did a pretty good job of bringing back some uh, punch in the image based on the original exposure. And if I look at that one, I'm sure I'm going to see, yeah, it's all pretty much mm, the vast majority of tones are on the left side of the histogram and it definitely toes down uh, just beyond the midpoint. So definitely qualifies as a... Um, as a low key image. So somebody's into stuffed animals, it appears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I don't even know. So the ones on the left are a little more identifiable to me than the ones on the right. I'm not sure what they are. They look like. It's like they're Pokemon. 
Oh, uh, well, see, I'm just too old for that stuff. I <laughs> don't recognize what they are, but now I, now I see. Okay. Do you have a favorite between the two? Um, I mean, I like them both. I feel like I did better on the one on the right. As far as the assignment goes, yes. As far as having a little more dramatic lighting, which a low key image should have, yes. Mm. Um, and and also probably, I think the biggest issue on the one on the left is just again having if you had moved the subjects further away from the wall, so that the wall would have been a little less in focus. I think okay. that that improves that a whole lot because that's kind of what happened in the one on the left or on the one on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just far enough away that, you know, it, the shallow depth of field kind of renders that wall a little bit less uh, noticeable than it is on the left. So, yeah, okay, so we'll go with that one. And we're going to move on. Ashton is up next. This is our high key image. I really don't have to check the histogram on that. I, I do believe it's probably going to be... Um, well, it's surprising. It uh, it really kind of, and it, I guess it shouldn't surprise me. There's a little spike on the right, obviously, because of the highlights on the side of the cat. But the histogram is pretty much dead center right up in the middle because so much of the image is gray. Um, so it's, it's funny that the histogram doesn't bear out the fact that the image does sort of feel like more of a high key image. I think it qualifies because it's close uh, and there is that spike on the right, but uh, it's a little bit of a surprise. I thought the histogram would be a little further to the right than it is, but I'd say, I'd still have to say that's, that's a, a bit of a high key image rather than mid key. This one's interesting. Tell me, is this a, a screen of some sort that I'm looking at? Yeah, it's a TV, but I thought the colors looked good with the, dark background that's why i chose that yeah so this is a tricky item to expose properly and, and you it looks like you nailed it um, i'm gonna open this up and look so again it's weird this histogram is showing me yeah definitely way to the left um, it does stretch all the way to the right which is a good thing and that's uh that's because of the highlights and so forth that are in in the image but um yeah, this is a tough image to get. And if you didn't get the exposure right, the color wouldn't have been anywhere near <clears throat> what it is. So it is. Uh, so this is what a, a, a splash screen off of off of uh, a streaming device, I guess. For for uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's, it's um, at first I didn't recognize it. For, I'll tell you what it looks like at first when you first look at it. Uh, it it tends to make you think that it is much larger than it is, and I would I'm thinking more along the lines of a stage background um, because of the angle that you shot it at. You know, like your seats would have been up high and off to the right or something, and this is before yeah. the performance started. But then I can see the edge of the screen in the upper left hand corner, um, so it's a pretty good job of camouflaging that uh, because it definitely does look like a stage background which is another thing that's really hard to get the exposure right on. But uh, in either case, you got the exposure uh, pretty much dead on on that one. I don't think you could have. Um, and, and if you'd shot it straight on, you probably would have had more of an issue with a reflection. Did you try anything straight on with this? No. I can see a little bit of a window reflection here in the upper left. And I'm just wondering if you had moved over, if that would have made it uh, even worse. Yeah. Um, so probably the angle, it is a strange, so you can change these things, by the way, if you ever want to, um, there's a couple of ways to do it in Photoshop, uh, to get that straight on. Like if you had to shoot it from an angle, but you wanted it to look more straight on, let me go over here and, and switch and I'll show you. So this is, I'll show you the histogram first. So that's our luminosity histogram. But if I wanted to um, bring this back into, uh, probably the easy, easiest way to do it is just to transform it. Let me just zoom it down. And if I go into, uh, I have to change the background to a, uh, an editable 
uh, layer. And all, all you do is just click the lock to turn the lock off. And then if I go to free transform, which is command T or control T, then I can hold down a modifier key on the, on Macs, it's the command key and on windows it's control. And I can just take a corner of this image and pull it so that it lines up there. And then I just do the same thing basically with all four corners to make this line up. And now it, well, let me pull the upper one around a little bit more. Probably take that up a hair. And then bang, it looks like you pretty much shot it straight on. Um, and it's, it's amazing that unless you, um, even in this case, which we did a, a pretty fair, uh, fairly huge trans transformation, it really doesn't degrade the quality of it at all. Um, there's also a perspective cropping tool, which will, uh, which will do the same thing, but that's a pretty, pretty quick way to, to pull something like that around. So let me get rid of this. And we'll go back to bridge. So between the two, which one's your favorite? Um, I like either of them. So I'd mm -hmm. say you can just add that one. The, the screen, okay. I think probably more than anything, it's just that it's a little more impactful because of color. Um, nothing wrong with your kitty image. Uh, again, um, it, you know, it is what it is. It's fairly simple image, which helps, you know, simple is better. Yeah. But I think the other one has maybe a little bit more impact. All right. So let's see if Abby this week has images that are sized <laughs> properly. I think she does. Yes. I'm looking at them here and they're all showing me large files. All right. So let's go in and, um, <laughs> Uh, clearly, we're in Halloween mode here. So tell me, we've got a couple of these. This is not, no, it's not the same image. No, it's different. But are they, and they're not the same people either, are they? Or one of them is. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, I'm sorry, the same ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they are the same ghost. <laughs> so this one's kind of interesting. So you did some work on this. Tell me what you did. All right, so I photoshopped any like body parts out of it, and then like I highlighted the mid, like kind of like the middle, so it would look spooky, like a spirit sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing that it did is, if you look at it compared to this one, is it removed all the wrinkles? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because ghosts shouldn't so. be wrinkled; they they should be smooth and floating and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so yeah, and I, I kind of like the, the, did you change the color of the doors as well? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah, I think that kind of works. It's kind of, uh, I don't know why. I, I don't know why. There's just a whole lot more um, to like and a lot more going on here in the one that you edited compared to where you started. So that Thanks. one's pretty interesting. I like that one. It's not exactly... No, it's not the same shot, but it's very similar, obviously. Yes, sir. All right, so that's pretty cool. All right, so <laughs> ghosts caught on camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, I named them for you this week. Yeah, I yeah, I like, so let's go back. So empty hallway, fake. Why <laughs> fake? <laughs> it's fake, fake imagery, I'm telling you. Gotcha. Ghost all right, so ghost caught on camera. Ghost caught itself on camera, apparently. <laughs> and uh, and ghosts are, are are definitely Nikon users. I can see that. <laughs> Angels maybe are Canon users. I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> so that most of these are just kind of fun images. Um, clearly, because of the fact that we've got. Um, stuff like this that they're going to record or render as high key images. And then yeah. this one is just titled hello. <laughs> um, so we'll, I will say you want to say to you one thing. So uh, I don't know what the original of this looks like. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you take uh, uh, an image that's kind of normally exposed and just reduce the uh, the exposure to make it darker, it's yeah. not exactly what I would consider a low key image because uh, okay. it's it's just you know you could do that with any image. You could really overexpose even a black image to the point where you get the histogram to look correct. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I mean, I can see that it looks like it was it was taken down some you would have had to because that wall behind would have probably rendered as uh, a little too bright otherwise. It was like a dark room, but the what was coming in from the window was. Yeah, I can see the light coming from camera right here. Um, and it's interesting that we still can see, you know, even the areas that are intersecting with the darkness, there's still some detail there. Mm -hmm. So that one is hello. Then we have zebras can't drive. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. <laughs> makes you really think, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it makes me want to just not think, actually. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go back to this. This is clearly, it, it, in my opinion, this is clearly the best image in here. Uh, it's a pretty good example of high key, uh, and I think the things that you did to it are, you know, uh, in keeping with the vein of the of the shot. So I think it's a it's a pretty good. So how did you change the colors of the doorway? Tell me what you did there. I used like um, what was it the uh, I think the color mixer or something, and it had like a blue slide. So I just slid mm -hmm. it all the way down, and it made them like a greenish blue. Yeah, it's probably the easiest way to do it um, because there was no other color really in the image uh, like that. So it kind of isolated it. Um, there are other ways of doing it. There's a color range selector, but what you did was probably the, the most effective way. So, yeah, I like that one. I think it's cute. Cool image. We're throwing that one in there. The Thank rest you. of them, uh, uh, thanks for playing <laughs> <laughs> and, and having a little bit of fun with it. Um, but yeah, that's definitely your highlight image right there. All right. All right. So Chris, let's go to your list. So clearly these were not shot. <laughs> you didn't go out this week and shoot these. I can see that. Um, but as far as qualifying as a low key image, yeah. Wow. This one, uh, not only low key frightening as hell. Um, I watch a lot of nature shows and man, Crocs and alligators are just amazing at how fast they move in the water. Um, but yeah, as far as an images go, uh, an image goes, the way this is cropped into a slim line, which kind of uh, mimics the uh, the body, um, the the way the exposure has been dropped, we still. I'm betting that we still have. I'm going to go into Photoshop and look. Um, there's probably still some. Um, now there's nothing really too far above midtone, even though it looks like there would be. Um, but yeah, it's definitely the histogram is way down low, but it is not slammed up against the left. There's actually a heel right there, right before you get into the zero point. So pretty good, uh, pretty good processing on this to get it to a very dark image without losing detail that's that's pretty good and then again the lighting really helps on this um you can if you look at the shadows coming off the spines on this thing's back you can kind of see um, the direction of the light and and why it's you know highlighting certain things so uh it was it was a it was a good find uh original photograph to do this and then this, I have not looked at. Let's look at this histogram. I'm going to guess this might be more mid-key. Yeah, this is pretty much, um, if you, if I, as you're, as I'm looking at the histogram, it, you know, it starts here and it goes up in the middle and it comes back down. So it's, it's really got the majority of the pixels in the middle area. Um, great shot great exposure great processing um, clouds might be for my taste maybe just a little bit overdone but um, I it kind of does fit the the look of the uh, of the location you know it's a little bit dramatic I might have just pulled back on the clouds a little bit but the color is great like I said it's not not exactly a high key image but I can see how you would think it might be um, 
I think if the exposure was just a little brighter, you would have gotten that in the histogram, but you would have lost the color saturation that you had. Um, where is this, by the way? Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure because we like bounce around a lot, but it's somewhere in Mexico. Um, probably a couple hours from Cancun, if I had to guess. I'm not, can't really remember. Not the safest place anymore, that's for sure. Yeah, we get like drivers and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of sketchy sometimes, but <laughs> it makes it cool. Like, because that's like just a normal town, like, not very many tourists around. And that's like what we want to see. Yeah, yeah. When I'm away someplace like that, you know, I remember when I was, uh, was in Aruba and I was a little disappointed that all of the touristy areas were like, you know, they had these cute little shops and things downtown and then there was a little Caesars pizza next to it. I'm like, I can see that in Miami, you know, I don't need to go to Aruba, but if you rent uh, a, a Jeep and go to what they call the, it's not unexplored, but it's the, un, um, the unchanged side of the island uh, where it's pretty much, there's some old ruins there. There's, uh, you know, some beaches that are not, not like there's nobody laying on the beaches. They're like rocky beaches and things like that. Those are the kinds of things that um, that I look for when I'm when I'm away too. You just you do have to be careful. Um, so there's a guy I know. Um, actually, I've got his book right here. Let me grab that. Oh, oh that hurt. <laughs> so this is the cover. Let me get this on camera. This is the cover of the book. It's called The Last Places. And as you go through, this is all shot on film. So these are all um, shot in uh, third world countries. And they are like dying cultures and, and things like that. That uh, Eric Miola is the, the photographer's name. He's the guy, he's, his, he's done a lot of stuff in his career, mostly commercial photographer, but He's the guy, I, I don't know if I told you this before or not, but he's the one who shot the Bruce Springsteen album cover, Born to Run, back in 1976, the black and white with him and Clarence Clemens. Uh, but when Bruce was just just getting noticed and Eric's career was just taking off too, um, that's sort of his claim to fame. But this book, um, he had been approached by Kodak. Uh, this would have been in the early 2000s I want to say maybe a little bit later than that and he was still shooting film and Kodak wanted to know what his dream assignment would be and he said well I'd like to travel the world and photograph all the aboriginal uh, tribes and dying cultures and places like that and they said you got two years and an unlimited budget and for two years he got to go anywhere in the world that he wanted to and some of the it, the images are fantastic but the stories are even more, and the reason that it comes to mind is, you know, you mentioned getting a driver and doing this. So I don't know what country he was in, uh, an African country. There was a civil war going on, and they got a driver to take them, you know, 100, they, he said they were literally 100 miles from the nearest dirt road. <laughs> That's how far off the beaten path they were. And their driver was... Um, um, abducted by, you know, civil war was going on. He was on one side, people from the other side grabbed him, shot him, killed him, threw him down a well and left. And he said where we were in a country where we didn't speak the language, a hundred miles from the nearest dirt road and had to find, had to find our way back to civilization. And uh, that was just kind of normal for, you know, he shot in, in uh, the Arctic circle, Antarctica, Africa, uh, South America, all sorts of places like this. Uh, and in places that were uh, not only a lot of civil unrest going on, but just uh, not safe, like even from a, a health standpoint. And, um, but for two years, that was his life. And he came away with uh, some pretty fantastic images. So it's it's a cool thing to do you just got to be number one a little bit lucky and number two a little bit careful uh, Mexico didn't used to be so bad uh, in some spots but I know in Cancun now they pretty much are telling you don't leave the resort area um, I have yeah, I know people a little south we stay in Playa del Carmen and we have to go see the ruins like Chichen Itza and all those other things so 
I don't know. It, it didn't seem very sketchy, to be honest with you. Yeah, you kind of get a feel sometimes for places. Yeah, I, I think as far as islands and places like that go, Bermuda was probably the safest place I've ever felt like I was. Like there was never a time, no matter what time of day or night or whether I was alone and had my camera equipment with me or whatever, never felt unsafe there. Those people are just so friendly. You do have to remember, however, to say – uh, you can't just start a conversation with a local there. They won't respond. If you don't say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening first, you can talk all day and they will not respond. They, they consider that rude if you don't say good morning and then go in. So I, I didn't know that. I got on a bus and I'm like, will this bus take me to middle road? And the bus driver totally ignored me, just looked straight forward. I asked like three times and I thought, well, maybe she doesn't speak English. And then she starts a conversation with somebody else. I thought, well, that's not it. What the heck's going on here? So I mentioned it to my friend that I was staying with, and he said, oh, yeah. He said, a lot of the locals think it's their job to educate the tourists into proper etiquette. Um, but, yeah, you a little bit of research ahead of time uh, can go a long way to s solving a lot of that. So I don't know about you. I really like this image. Uh, I mean, I like both of them, but, I mean, as far as the assignment, obviously this one qualifies – as a true low key. And I think overall, it's just got a lot more impact. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I don't really think my style of photography suits high key images very well. So I'm more of a low key shooter. And, and there's nothing wrong with having a style for sure. I think that if you look though, you would probably find, um, you know, if, with images you've already taken, you might find more than you would expect but I, I know what you're saying. I, you know, for my uh, work that I get paid for, I, obviously I'm on both ends of the spectrum, but for my own personal stuff, I do like stuff that's a little more moody and, uh, uh, and darker in tone. So I'm kind of with you there. Anyway, good job. Uh, even though, uh, again, I'd still like to see you go out and especially for the high key, I, I would like to have seen you go because you can find things more more than you think you can if you really start looking. I'd like to have seen a new image there, but I really like this one. All right, so Jacob, you did something really interesting here. And let me find you. There we go. So you have basically the same image that you photographed two ways, but under different lighting, and it gave you two different looks. So this is your high key image, which is a laptop sitting on a light wood desk with a white wall behind it, and then the same laptop with the lights turned out and only backlit by the screen. Uh, I think the whole concept of what you did here was really creative um, in taking the same subject and doing, uh, I actually wish I had thought to, to give that to you as an assignment, is to say, use the same subject and create one low key and one high key image. I, it was it was really smart the way you did that. It was efficient because you didn't have to go traipsing all over to find uh, what you were looking for, but it demonstrates the fact that, um, excuse me, you, you, you really kind of understood the assignment pretty well. Now, this to me, uh, as far as a photograph goes, is a little more mundane, but it definitely satisfies the requirement. This one to me um, is a little more interesting uh, again, if, if we were in the advanced class, uh, we would look at ways to highlight the edges of this thing a little more to give it more form and dimension. But based on the assignment, what it was and how you did it, uh, I think this one's pretty cool. Even though, you know, the screen is all white, which uh, obviously you wanted that to, to backlight that keyboard because uh, if it wasn't with such a dark keyboard, it might not have uh, rendered the way it did. Um, but it might have been cool to have, I don't know, an image uh, on the screen that would have achieved the same thing. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, you know what you could have done? You could have put the image, the first image on your screen. <laughs> the high key image could have. Uh, I've done that before. Uh, used a, a reverse image or something on a, a you know, striped it into a screen. Uh, but anyway, those are minor little things. I, I, I just like what you did. I like the the idea and the thought process behind it. I think you did pretty well. Anything that you want to tell me about either of these? Not really anything I can think of now. So you're a man of few words, but you, you get the job done. 
so yeah, I really like the dark one here. I, I like the mood that it creates. Uh, and I just think that the whole idea behind what you did was, was pretty good. So good job. All right. So we're, we're going to see some more ghosts here. <laughs> so let's start with, so we have uh, originals and then edited. So these are some, uh, this is a, an example of high key. This is the original on the bottom, the edited one on the top. So other than obviously you adjusted the white balance, you adjusted the exposure and look, man, what a difference the white balance made, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I mean, there are orange pumpkins, but the white ones shouldn't be orange. <laughs> Just the orange ones should yeah. be orange. And especially the towel or whatever they're laying on in the foreground made a huge difference in bringing that up. Um, yeah, again, pretty simple image. Um, if this was a family, <laughs> I would have changed, you know, the the positioning of the pumpkins so that the heads weren't right over top of each other, but it's not. It's more of a, you know, you could almost make a case for this as a little more of a commercial shot, so I'm not going to knock it for that. Um, but I like how you got from, from point A to point B. Point B... Uh, renders this pretty well and then i i just think you guys are having way too much fun with these <laughs> um but i hope it i hope that it's getting uh, getting noticed i hope that uh you know probably people poke their heads out the doors and go oh it's them again <laughs> it's nothing to worry about it's just them again <laughs> So same kind of thing here. Uh, we went to black and white on the one on the right, did a little more extreme cropping. Um, again, it's not the same shot because I can see the positioning of the lights and things are a little different, but it's, it's pretty similar. Um, or is it? No, it is the same shot. You just cropped that upper light out. Okay. I see now it is the same. Yeah. So again, um, good job on deciding what to do in the processing. I like the fact that when you reduce this to black and white, the blacks in the costumes now are uh, balanced by the doors, which have gone black. Uh, whereas in the color version, you know, you've got two different things going on there. So yeah. black and white definitely was, was a huge improvement on this one. And let's see this. <laughs> yeah, so the shoes are a dead giveaway, guys. Uh, <laughs> the shoes and the clothing. So I'll tell you, probably 10 years ago, maybe a little bit. No, it would have been about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, I have my neighbors across the street had two sons who were in, at the time they were in high school, and the one was really quiet. Like he never said a whole lot. And so this particular year for Halloween, um, you know, somebody comes to the door and we go out and it's an older, you know, we get, we do get a lot of high school kids and sometimes in the neighborhood here and we're like, okay, whatever, cool. No problem. Take some candy. So we gave him some candy and then 20 minutes later, uh, basically what it was happening, he's, he's, he was going home and changing costumes <laughs> and coming back. He came back like four times. And finally, um, the fourth time as he was leaving, my ex-wife said, uh, you might want to think about changing your shoes next time <laughs> because she figured out eventually that it was the same, same person because of the shoes. But in this case, I actually, I think that's part of the cuteness of this image. You know, the one, the finished one on the right. Because, you know, it's like, oh, here's these, we're, we're, we're ghosts, we're trying to be ghosts, but, you know, we don't realize our slip is showing kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty interesting. So I don't know if I, saw, oh, yes, I did see this one. Okay. So, yeah, your original on the left um, processing has made a couple of things stand out in the one on the right. Um, I like the I like the reduction in color. It looks like you. I mean, some things are reduced in color. Other things are a little more saturated. But it looks like it's been um, desaturated overall somewhat. I think that makes the chain link stand out. But again, cropping the unusual cropping on this one creates a sense of tension. Um, 
because you're like, I don't know, there could be 50 of these dudes back there coming at me through this chain link fence. I'm only seeing, you know, the middle. I don't know. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting and good uh, time of year to be doing stuff like this. <laughs> so this one definitely should have a title, but uh, I'm going to leave that up to you guys as far as how you do that. The shiny. The, yeah, this is after the... Um, this is after the uh, the ghosts came off, or before, <laughs> before they went on. I'm not sure. What is the, what is this? That's my logo. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. So, is it a is it a patch, or did you actually is it like an iron on or something, yeah, or an iron on? An iron on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't figure that out at first. All right, now I got you. All right, let me go back here. And look, I think for me, do you have a favorite? I, there are two of them that I like really well here. Um, I like the zombie one. Yeah, I think, again, from a uh, – it would have been these two, but from a strictly uh, – because I think the humor in this one's pretty good. But I think <laughs> from, a strictly, from a strictly impact standpoint, uh, yeah, the zombie one is the one that probably would have stood out in my mind more than any other as well. Let me see if we got, yeah, I did put that in. Okay, cool. All right, so keep having fun. That's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> nice. Before we move on, I think I just, Eva, I just got a uh, an email from you. So let's see what we got here. All right. <laughs> what see happens when you do it at 1.30 in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> If somebody else did that uh, or either did that last week or, or email, I think it might have been David. Somebody had an issue with just sending uh, XMP files or, or whatever. And that's, that's just what happened to you as well. So, all right. It looks like I've got them. I will send them over and we'll get to them in, well, we got a couple to go through first. So. So, David, again, uh, two weeks in a row, I really like what you did. So this is, let's look at your low-key image here. Um, mostly, it looks like cropping, although there might be a few other things done here, but the cropping was done uh, purposefully. I like how it was done. Uh, again, there's a little bit more on the left, and, or I'm sorry, on the right and on the bottom than we need for the image. Uh, definitely qualifies as a low key image and it's kind of a cool find. Um, and it's a neat an interesting statement. Um, like, you know, we've got all this, it's, it's fall and it looks like late fall and you've got all this death and in, in the leaves and, and everything on the ground and the trees are starting to die. And then we've got this old dead, um, vehicle in the background. So it's kind of a, uh, an interesting play between the two. I kind of like that. Um, this is an image. This is a type of an, an image that I would really like to play with, um, with a certain filter set that I use sometimes. Actually, I'm going to go in and, and, and do that. I'll let you guys watch that just to see if we can. I, I think this is an image that I can really make sing. So let's go back to, oh, there we go. All right, so let me share that screen. I want to make sure, yeah, he's still there, okay. So I'm going to just duplicate the um, background image so that I don't, uh, are you guys seeing this in, in Photoshop now? Okay, I'm going to dupli duplicate the background image, even though that doubles the file size, it's not a huge deal at this point, but I always want to leave my background intact so that I can blend if I want to, I can reduce the opacity of the effect that I uh, put on. Now, when I go into the filter area, I'm not sure what's going to happen um, if you guys are going to be able to see this or if it's going to treat it like a separate program. Let's find out. All right, so what I'm seeing now is the image 
in a plug-in and it actually has a, a white border around it. Are you guys seeing that? I'm, I'm, I'm seeing one head nod, but I'm not, <laughs> not hearing. Okay, so you guys are, okay, cool. So uh, this is not the effect that I would apply. There's, there's a filter in here called tonal contrast, which I really like a lot. And if you look, I'm just clicking it on and off the before and after. I think I'm going to increase this even more. So the highlights aren't having a lot of an effect because it is mostly a low key image. Let's add in a little bit of detail extractor, which should give us even more. Let's bump the contrast up a little bit. There we go. And maybe pull the saturation back even a little bit. So there's our original and then a couple little uh, adjustments kind of give it a little more of a creepy feel. There's another, uh, there's another one in here that I kind of like. Let me turn this one off and we'll go into this. And now this one does require a little bit of work to maintain detail in the shadows. Uh, and you can play with the saturation. You can either leave it up or take it down. So this one's designed to be a fairly desaturated image. Um, but there is still a hint of color in there. And that's the before and after, just kind of a couple little things. And then I'd probably put a little vignette or something on. It might be kind of interesting. But I really like for these old um, images that have texture, I like adding something that's going to bring that out even more. Uh, and this is a great image for that. Let me get out of that. Hopefully. I have the spinning beach ball of death right now. Hmm. Now let me see if I can just switch back to No, I'm going to have to quit this. Sometimes these plugins will actually make um the program stop responding. I'm going to get that running again in the background while we move on. Let's go back to bridge. So I like that image, um, but I like, I think I like this one even more. So there's the original and there's the, um, the finished one. So it's cleaned up a good bit. The exposure has been adjusted. Um, I, I think I would have maybe gone even further. I like the fact that you cropped it to a vertical. I think that uh, increases, um, uh, it helps the composition a great deal, even though it, it's still good even as a horizontal. I like, you know, that the whole river bend being in there and stuff. But as far as giving a little more uh, detail to the, this is a cardinal power, I pass this every single day. <laughs> so I see this every day, uh, but not from this angle. Um, I'm trying to figure out <laughs> where you shot this from. Uh, Shannon Stone Road off of Route 2. Ah, okay. There's a, a pull-off as you go up through the windy and you can look over the whole river. You can see the dam and the coal chute and everything. So you're on the West Virginia side here. Yeah. Because this really looks like, like that foreground looks almost like the old Mazeroski golf course in Rayland. Um, but if you're on the West Virginia side, it, I guess it still could be. Yeah. Yeah, there's I just a, had the camera zoomed all the way in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool uh, vantage point uh, for this. Like if, if somebody hired me to shoot this thing, uh, I'd be calling you to, to show me exactly where that is because that's a really good angle to shoot this from. Uh, I do want to go in. Um, I mean, I'm not going to do it, but I, I think if, because since you sent me the raw file, I think I'd like to play with this a little bit. Um, more for, uh, you got a good bit more texture and detail in the image, but I personally, I might've gone a different way. I might've changed the color balance on it a little bit to bring out more of the fall color. I don't know. 
I am going to go in and look at that. I just, I'm curious. Let me get this open and then I'll, um, I'll switch over so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. And then we're going to do this one. Okay. So exposure obviously is going to come up. This is a, a D Hayes image if I ever saw one. Um, yeah, we're really going to pull that exposure, but then compensate with the blacks. And I really wanted to play with the color balance here more than anything. And I know this kind of starts to render it as a little more normal. And you may have liked the fact that it had that blue cast to it. I'm not knocking that at all. Um, I just wanted to see if I could kind of make a different image out of this. So I think I need to go into the color mixer and pull back on a few, like that blue saturation. Yeah, and keep everything else up. Hmm. Let's pull the clarity, texture, let's get the vibrance up. Yeah, something a little more, let me pull back and change, just look at the different colors. We don't want to go that far. So that definitely brings the more of the fall feel into play. Uh, I just wanted to see how far we could get along those lines. I don't dislike what you did. I think that sometimes a subject like this should feel a little more cold and impersonal and uh, a, little, a little more wintry or whatever. Um, but I just wanted to see how far we could go with, with the raw file on that. Let me get back to bridge. But yeah, the way you um, the way you cropped it, I think was was smart. I think it made sense because of the vertical stacks that we're looking at, um, and it does look like a gray, you know, which is what I see almost every morning going up, gray, featureless, uh, kind of monochromatic. So, I, like I said, I'm not knocking that at all. Just wanted to see what we can do with it. But I really I like both of these shots. Um, I think. I don't know. I, I just think maybe this one is just a little more impactful for me because it's, it's something I haven't quite seen before. Uh, this I've seen before it's done well, but I have seen it before. Technically though, both of these, like the last two weeks, so much better uh, on your end on, on everything. So really happy to see that. looks like you figured a few things out. Do you have between the two, uh, do you have a favorite? I kind of like the, the Cardinal plant better. Yeah, I, I just think it has, it's just a little more impact. It's a little cooler, um, no pun intended. <laughs> and and for me, like I said, because I see this every day, and I see it from a variety of angles, the, uh, the path that I take is about a 75-mile loop. And so I'll see the tops of these stacks from three or four different points throughout the Ohio countryside. Uh, and it's really interesting to see how far away you can get and still see these things. But this is just an interesting angle. So you said this is off of Stone and Shannon Road. Yeah, you go up, and right before you go, you go up around the big bend, and then there's a turn, um, like when the guardrail starts. Mm -hmm. There's a little pull-off, and you can see down both sides of the river. Oh, wow. Dams, and you can see down the, to the cardinal plant. Well, that's someplace I'm going to have to go check out, uh, probably in the, in the spring, though, because we're already past the point for me. <laughs> like, I don't want to be outside anymore. Uh, unless I'm going to be flying somewhere where there's a beach. Uh, I think I'm done for the year. I'm going to stay inside. But cool, cool place, uh, cool vantage point. And also you got really uh, kind of lucky that that day the smokestack was, because it doesn't operate every day or all day, but that there was smoke coming out and it kind of, the wind kind of put it in a direction that makes sense for the composition that you've got. So good job uh, finding the spot. Uh, got a little lucky on the smoke and then I do like what you did with it. So pretty cool overall. All right. So Taylor, we've got um, low key. Clearly it is. Uh, 
Did you, since I don't have originals to compare with, do you, did you do anything uh, in processing as far as color is concerned on this, or is this just pretty much the way it came out? Um, I did edit that one. I can't remember what I did with it. So the reason I ask is that the wood, uh, the wood has a, uh, a bit of a, a purplish magenta, more purple, I think, feel to it, which really uh, balances out against those warm lights really well. Uh, those are complementary colors. Next week, we probably will get into working with color uh, as a subject, uh, color contrast, complementary color, that kind of stuff. Uh, so this is an image uh, that you could have held on to for a week or two and, and had your assignment uh, maybe done. But this is an interesting one. I like it. It's simple. Love the diagonal that you created. Not only uh, by tilting with the fence, but then we still have a diagonal with the, uh, the wires and opposite diagonal with the wires uh, on the uh, lights as well. Loss of detail a little bit at the top, but not in an area where it matters. Uh, I think the story here is really the texture of that wood and the play between the warm and the cool lights. So uh, good job on all the decisions that you made there. And the lights are not completely blown out. Um, you know, you can still see the filament and all of that. So yeah, pretty well done. So that's your low key. This one again, probably if I went and look, it probably would be a little more mid key than high key. I know where this is. Uh, it's leading up to the path by the tunnel. Um, mm -hmm. I've been up there. I've shot up there so many times. Um, and I all, and I've actually shot these steps before too. I just feel like there's a shot there, and this is, was this recently? This looks like it might have been a little earlier in the year. It was a little bit earlier, yeah. Yeah, because of the vegetation and everything. I think the shot here that, that I keep wanting to to do um, is going to be either in like the winter time or early spring or even late fall or something like that when all that vegetation is is back off of those steps because there's just something about the color and the blue sky at the top makes it, you know, kind of pulls the blue out of those steps, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we've got a little bit of an off angle, so it's not straight up and down. Um, it's a cool spot. I think, I don't know what the shot is here that I'm looking for, but I know there is something there using these steps. I just, one of these days I'll go back there and figure it out. And maybe it's the introduction of a subject on those steps or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's a cool, a cool yeah, it, it is, it's a cool, it's a cool place, the whole area. Uh, up at the top there, if you turn left, um, that bridge that goes across with all of the steel and the ironwork and stuff, that's a really cool place to shoot. I've done portraits up there like during the day and at midnight <laughs> as well uh, with, with lighting because the sodium vapor lights that are there are kind of interesting. They give it kind of an eerie, uh, an eerie feel. So overall, it's a, it's a pretty cool spot and and the steps uh, look, obviously, they've been painted a while ago. They could use a fresh coat of paint, but uh, that's kind of the charm of them, I think, is that it's a little bit in decay. Um, mm. But anyway, between the two, unless you disagree, I, I really like the interplay of the color on this one. Um, you did color kind of interplay on both images, but um, the warm and the cool, the diagonals, the, the exposure done really well. And the fact that it is uh, a low-key image, I think this is probably the better of the two. I even like the fact the way the, the lights are spaced um, so that they're not equidistant, that they have a little gap in there. There's just a whole bunch of little things that uh, make this kind of an interesting image for me. Uh, I like that one, too. I, I usually mess around with the um, the of like all of my images and the saturation. Those are two things that like, I really love to mess around with, so. Well, good, then you'll definitely like when we start playing with color a little bit more because um, not everybody, you know, it's funny, we did black and white um, a week or two ago and black and white can be really cool for all sorts of subjects, but in some ways it takes a little bit more work to get a really good color image because you really have to understand how those uh, how colors play off of one another uh, subconsciously to to make an image. And this one, you know, whether you went for it or just played with something until you found 
you know, something that looked cool. I don't know, but this one really works for that. So good job. I like the image. All right. So James, so it looks like if so this image is a little bit um, taken up a little bit in exposure, I think if the exposure on this was a little more uh, straightforward, it probably wouldn't qualify as a high key image. Um, I probably just simply does because it's a little bit over. Just looking at, at the dark, uh, the suits and things hanging in the background, I think the brightest thing in the image obviously is uh, the s skin and the yellow, um, uh, yellow shirt. But, um, it does have a little bit of a pastel feel because of the fact that it's it's taken over a little bit like this. And it looks to me, now that I look at it, I'm seeing something that I can't quite figure out. There is a little halo. So as you look at her arm here, are you seeing this where, let me zoom it in. This little gray, so the, the lower right here is her arm. Then we've got the shirt and then there's this little gray band in the middle which looks like a shadow of some sort i'm also seeing it up here above her so i'm not sure what you did if there's some processing thing that you did here that created that effect I see a little bit of it on her back as well I'm looking to see i don't see it anywhere else no i do right here above the head it's almost like sometimes when you do a uh, if you do a long exposure with a flash uh, the flash kind of freezes everything and then you get a little bit of a ghost image as well. That's obviously not what happened here, but any ideas? <laughs> um, it also does it like on the back of my head too. I noticed that when I was doing it, but no, I just um, like, yeah, right like slid the sliders both ways and then found which direction I liked and moved it like back or forward. Yeah, it's interesting. I'd love to know what caused that. Um, because it does look, a and it's on both sides. If you look here at her arm, it's both above and below her arm. It's kind of odd. Can't quite figure out what's going on there. But it's only on, it's only on items that moved, like the things that are, that haven't moved. And it's only, a, it's a one one hundredth of a second exposure. So it's not like a long exposure. I don't know. It's kind of, Kind of weird. It's just the thing that really kind of caught my eye there. So this, I'm sure, I guess this was prior to the jump. Is that what this is? Yeah, I like. I just took the picture because I thought it was kind of absurd that I was about to jump out of a plane but had to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want you to be unsafe, right? <laughs> yeah, I had to wear a plane. I had to wear a mask until like I was walking to jump out of the plane. It was a little absurd to me. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of get that too. <laughs> that that in itself would have been, yeah, I guess it's, so it does make an interesting statement here, even at this point. Uh, I think it would have been funnier had you already been on the plane wearing Oh, I mask. have some where you I'm do? on the plane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's kind of an interesting commentary. Um, yeah, I'm about to jump out of an airplane, but oh, I got my mask on, I'm safe. <laughs> Uh, I didn't pick up on that. I, I probably should have, but I, I didn't pick up on that. But now that you mention it, it is kind of funny. All right. So now we are, this is more of our low key image. So, so here's a bit of a snapshot more than anything, but a, a couple of interesting things. Um, the tilt on the camera kind of makes, uh, makes this a little even more interesting than it was originally, I think. Um, not sure what else to say about it. I mean, it, it satisfies uh, the requirement of a low key image, even though it is, it's, it's basically because of the tones in the image. There's real, there's no white in it. There's no, uh, most of the stuff in it is, is mid tone or darker. So it works for that. Nothing to comment on, you know, as far as composite. I mean, some shots just are what they are. And this is, you know, basically a snapshot, but it does, does, you know, fall into that category. Between the two, obviously, this is the one that I go to because it's got so many uh, unusual and interesting things, some of which I can't figure out. And I just, I do like all the color. Like, there's so much bright, garish, non-conforming color here. Um, 
that it does kind of command your attention. I think I think I would like to I would like to see this image um, with a little more you know a little darker overall. I think the color would probably even pop more just as a photograph. But that's the one that uh, I think between the two really gets a little more um, of a look. So let me get uh, Eva. I got to pull your images over yet. buried in a few folders here so there we go we'll do a replace and then we should be able to take a look uh-oh no items to display <laughs> all right let me just open the folder to make sure that it's not a bridge issue Nope, same thing. I just got the XMP files and nothing else. Those are just the text files. So I'm not sure what happened to you there. Um, there. Let me look on the, the one that I downloaded just to make sure that nothing got lost in the transfer to the other computer. And it is so slow right now. But yeah, yep, that's what it was. Just the two eight kilobyte XMP files, which are, those are, like I said, those are sidecar files. They, um, they're the files that contain the instructions for the raw file to, to tell uh, the program how to process the raw file but the images themselves unfortunately are not here so I would encourage you <laughs> to try again uh, we may not okay. we're, we're not going to get to look at them probably right now unless uh, we figure it out you know fairly quickly but um, so we'll hold off on that uh, we'll take we'll do a little 10 minute break here during which maybe you can play and see if you can uh, Fine. It, so it, there should you should have files um, on your your device that have it's the file extension that you want to check, and so you'll either be looking for JPEGs or CR2s or something like that. Uh, the CR2 would be the the raw file, obviously, but if you've converted them to a JPEG, hopefully they'll have the same file name, but just with a JPEG extension. Um, that's what we want to see. So. In, we'll come back in about 10 minutes, and all we're going to do in, in the next section is look at some examples of uh, one final sort of a compositional uh, element. Uh, we'll show you some examples of that. That's going to be the assignment for next week is to create something similar. We really probably won't spend more than 15, 20 minutes uh, on that, and, uh, and then we'll get to break out a little bit early. But in the meantime, hopefully, um, we can find out what's wrong. If we can't get your images, we'll, then we'll um, – well, whether we do or not, when we first come back, we'll look at the uh, – look at everybody's and pick some winners out of this week's. So it's about 5.11. Let's call it 5.20, so nine minutes, actually eight now that it's almost 5.12. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go uh, take some – uh, better living through chemistry and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes and finish this up let me get out of the share there we go all right we'll see you about 20 after
Well, if everybody's coming back, we'll head to the last section here. <clears throat> okay, so Eva, did you, are you there? <laughs> oh, she may not be there. I just would, was wondering if you had any luck. Still working on it. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> okay. So we'll hold off just a little bit longer on looking okay. over all of those. Um, so in the meantime let's look at um where we're where we're headed i'm going to go back and uh share my bridge screen and we're going to look in a different uh folder altogether so the topic that we're going to um discuss now and which will be part of your well it will be your assignment for next week is juxtaposition it's not strictly speaking a um compositional element but it definitely is uh, a category sort of all to itself and i've got some examples here now typically when people use juxtaposition in uh photography it's um it's it's more often than not it's humorous it's got a little bit of comedy to it uh, two things that are played against each other that just don't belong together uh, or that make a statement of some sort or that contradict each other. Uh, that's pretty much what we're looking at. We're looking at two or more elements that are very unusual together and that they, um, they kind of say something. So some of these are a little small. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure how well you can see them, but this is a, a couple of billboards and on the top, is a uh it, you know it's a heavenly image of jesus it says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest and underneath that is a bud light billboard so the two together uh you know somebody had some fun with this somebody had to make a decision about where uh these billboards were going and they said hey you know what it'd be really cool <laughs> and they went ahead and did it so i think that's kind of funny uh, that's a good example of one. This is another one. Uh, the name of the street is Dream Way, and it's a dead end street. So, <laughs> just you know, it's not a great photograph at all. Um, it's underexposed. It's got all sorts of issues with it, but just the subject matter itself. So, again, if you find something like this and you want to photograph it, just try to do it in a way that's visually interesting uh, more than anything else. That's what we're looking for technically. Uh, a good image and visually interesting, something unusual. But this would be a good subject for that. Um, this one is uh, playing this go slow sign um, against a long exposure, making it look like traffic is just whizzing by. When in reality, it probably isn't. It's just the, the length of the exposure, but it does kind of, uh, it, it satisfies the juxtaposition uh, formula because the two things are balanced against each other. And even in color, so you've got the red sign and you've got the red taillights, uh, which are balanced diagonally across the image. Um, so it's kind of an interesting one that way. This is kind of cool. Um, just using a long lens to compress distance, sort of the way, David, the way you did with the uh, Cardinal plant. Um, this is a, a little bit of a different uh, application of it, but it looks like this boat is, you know, about to slam into the iceberg and become the second Titanic. Um, and when in reality, it's not that close to it. It's just uh, the long lens, but beautiful image. Um, really cool uh, location, beautiful day to shoot on something like that. And then just the compression of that lens. So you can do juxtaposition using uh, lens work in a case like this where you've got a long lens that's compressing distance or you could take a wide angle lens and stretch distance and, and kind of do a reverse effect of this this one i love a uh, woman sitting probably like in a hair salon and there's this big happy face on the window and she's about as sour looking as they come 
and clearly the person that took this picture knew what they were doing and clearly the person in the picture had no idea <laughs> and that to me uh is what makes it as funny as it is is that she has no idea uh, of what's being done here reduction to black and white sometimes can you know uh to help keep the attention focused right here there are probably a lot of colors and things out that window that might have been a distraction so that's done pretty well um love this one hang on somebody's trying to get in okay there we go go back to that so this one's interesting it's a, a, a photograph of a mushroom cloud uh, on the bottom and the top of a, a tree in the photo to the right and just being held over to make it look like it's uh, you know the top of that mushroom cloud. So there's a really, really cool uh, series of images that I have somewhere um, that you may have seen, you may not have, and they are, it was done this way. And what they did was they went to uh, places in Europe where there were historical photographs of, uh, like taken during World War II, of tanks you know, through the streets of Paris and so forth. And they took a photograph of the same street, or they took a photograph, uh, a printed photograph of that time period and held it up in such a way and took a new photo of the street so that you could see half of the image was the old and half of it was the current. And it was really cool the way it was done. It was very much like this one. Um, so it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult effect to pull off, but it's really powerful when you do. This is, uh, you know, as far as juxtaposition goes, this is, uh, you know, um, pitting old against new. So there's this new building uh, under construction in the background and um, ancient China uh, in the front. So, you know, again, just somebody saw that and was like, wow, that's, you know, two interesting things played against one another. And that's just the whole idea. Same thing here, old and new. So there's the old, um, energy source, the, the oil well in the background, and then the green energy uh, in the foreground. So clearly whoever shot that knew what they were doing. Hang on one second, guys. Hey, Eva, I got your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> And it actually looks like there are pictures there. So we'll get to those in a second okay. as soon as we get through this. All right. This is probably my favorite one in this whole group. So there's this huge uh, sign on the back of this artist. And the photographer literally waited for somebody to walk right in front of that to make it look like they're being painted by his brush. I love this image. Um, again, the person in the picture has no clue of what's being done. The scale of it is uh, is just perfect. Like this is, you can clearly see what it is. He didn't try to disguise it in any way, um, but it's all about timing. Um, there is a was a famous uh, French photographer uh, named Cartier-Bresson who uh, his uh, tagline was the decisive moment. And his entire career was based on knowing exactly when to push the button. And this is a prime example of that. Heck, it could be one of his images for all I know. Uh, this one I like too. We've got this homeless guy on the left who's just sort of lethargic and, and hanging out. And then you've got this sculpture of this you know high energy person on the right uh, pitted against each other. So those are all examples of juxtaposition. Uh, again, most of them, not all of them, but most of them have a bit of a humorous uh, uh, side uh, to it, but I think you kind of get the idea for what we're looking for. Let's see which one, I gotta get the right one here, the right folder, sorry, 1027. So for next week, the assignment is going to be to create one or more images. I'll be happy with one. If you can find more, that would be great uh that use juxtaposition as a uh, as a compositional element 
Um, again, doesn't have to be funny or humorous. It just seems like more often than not, that's what happens. But a lot of times this can be used to make a statement too. This can be just something that, um, you know, you're, you're trying to make some type, type of an impact uh, with the viewer. All right, Eva, let's see what we got here. Hey, we do have two images. All right, so here's our, this is kind of freaky. There's our high <laughs> key image. So I can see why they wouldn't come through. It was the ghost in the machine, right? <laughs> that was the problem. What am I, I mean, I, I kind of know what I'm looking at, but tell me how you, what is this exactly? What did you do? It's a Halloween prop and it's just overexposed. It was overexposed when I took it. I don't I know why I, I, cool. I wanted, I want, <laughs> I want to do one of the voices from South Park when I see this, like, that's just kind of what it reminds me of. Uh, yeah, again, time of year, kind of freaky. Uh, I but, have a feeling that this would have been a high key image or close to a high key image, even if it hadn't been overexposed. But uh, this is a case where overexposure actually does kind of make sense uh, to do on something like this. It's just, it reduces it more to, um, to leave a little more to the imagination, the upper part of the image where you can't quite see the shape of the head and what else is going on there, or almost like, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's overlit or so. I don't know. It's just kind of a, uh, the eyes really are a little more captivating, I think, because we don't see much more detail up there. And then this is the low key, which it really is low key. No doubt about that. Um, pro this is probably just like what in your house, probably lit with a, a, a lamp, a, right? One of those, yeah, cement yard decorations. <laughs> So it's a case where uh, normal lighting can actually render something pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it's all about exposure again on this one. It's a little bit under. It probably has to be to, you know, to eliminate some elements and to make this uh, as dramatic as, as it is. But it's not under to the point where you just did it to, to get the histogram to look right. So I like I like both of these. I think. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to leave it up to you. Creepy ghost. Yeah, I think I would have gone that way too. All right. So let's take a look at those. Let's see if we have, uh, we have 11 items. Is that correct? 10, 11. I should have 12, shouldn't I? Yeah. Oh, no, it is 11 because your folder is in there twice. We've got the one that uh, didn't have anything in it. All right. So let me get the window open where I can see you guys. You might want to flip your cameras on for this. And we'll increase the size on the images a little bit. All right, so um, how many vote for the lights, the upper left-hand corner? Okay, alligator. Okay, ghosts. Creepy guy. Skydive. I'm not, I'm missing Taylor and James. I'm not sure if you guys are there. I'm not getting your, your cameras, so. Hopefully you're still there. Um, dashboard. Okay. Um, dark screen, Roku screen. Fuzzy friends. Laptop screen. Creepy chain link. And the um, cardinal plant. All right, so it looks like we have a tie. Um, creepy guy here was one. I thought was the ghosts the other one. Who who voted for the ghosts again? Let me see those hands. Yeah, there were two of those two. So these are the two that both got the same number of votes. So now we got to vote again. <laughs> Everybody gets to shift if you didn't vote for one of these. So ghosts on the left. Well, don't even, don't even have to do the other one. That's our, the ghosts are our winners. Um, and I definitely still have to throw out 
uh, a few more. So even though um, they weren't shot for, this wasn't shot for the assignment, uh, the, the Gator is way cool. The um, power plant, just because of the conversion from the original and also the, you know, the decisions made in cropping it and, and so forth, I like that. And Jacob, uh, for the screen, just for the whole idea of taking the same exact subject and creating one high key and one low key image, uh, you guys are all getting points this week. So let me add those in while I have these highlighted. And David gets another one. All right, cool. So right now in the um, in the points arena, uh, Chris is in the lead with four, but Jacob is right on his heels, or he's in the lead with five. Jacob is right on his heels at four, and we've got a couple of people. Eva and Alana both have three. And then it's scattered twos and ones uh, down below there. Yeah. So it's it's the wealth has kind of been spread around a little bit. Um, good job this week. There were again probably you know a number of these images that were really interesting to me. Let me stop this share. Um, so let's talk just for a second before I let you go about the assignment next week. Does everybody understand what it is that we're doing? Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a fairly straightforward one, but I think it can be a little bit of fun and that's kind of the idea. Uh, at this point, we want to have a little bit of fun between now and the end of uh, the semester, uh, as much as possible. So, uh, go out and find something or create something. You can actually create it as well. You don't have to just find it. Um, sometimes you can just put two things together that don't belong together and that, you know, play off of each other really well. Uh, but again, try to do it, uh, so that it's visually interesting. Um, technically it should be correct and use techniques that we've talked about and learned up to this point. Uh, other than that, I'm just, uh, interested to see what you guys come up with because you're getting, you're getting more and more creative every week. So I like that. Any questions? All right, well, we're gonna give, get you out of here almost an hour early, um, <laughs> and I'm gonna go just wail in pain somewhere in a corner and curl up in a ball. <laughs> Hopefully by next week, I'll be back to normal, I, I hope. It's a wee little bit better than yesterday, so. Um, just go take a nap, that usually yeah, helps me. Yeah, I, I did that this afternoon, actually, before class. I got home kind of early and, and laid on a heating pad and um, this little, uh, this little stimulation thing, you know, this is the, the control pad for it. I've got two uh, electrodes on my back and boy, you don't want to mess this up though. Like if, if one of the contacts comes out, anybody ever been shocked by one of these things? Yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Uh, I've, the first experience I ever had was at a chiropractor. They were using one and she warned me. She's like, you know, I'm going to let you, set the level but go slow you know you got to get used to a level before you go up and that was fine but when i got this little thing it works really well uh, but i think once the first time the contact came off and i reached behind <laughs> to grab it oh my god like it's like getting stuck with a cattle prod <laughs> but it is pretty cool it does work all right guys so uh thanks for the input and we will see you i will post all of this hopefully later tonight and we'll see you guys in a week